In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. As we gather, brothers and sisters, today to receive our Lord, we pray with the whole church, with one of the very first martyrs. Fast, in fact, they give him the name, Justin Martyr. And as a, one of the first deacons in the church, he died serving the Lord and serving at the altar. As we gather to the altar, we pray that the same Jesus that inspired him to serve and even to give up his life for the faith might inspire us. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, Bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who through the Folly of the cross, wondrously taught St. Justin the martyr to surpass the knowledge, the surpassing knowledge of Christ. Grant us through his intercession that having been rejected and rejected deception and error, we may become steadfast in the faith. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Tobit. On the night of Pentecost, after I had buried the dead, I, Tobit, went into my courtyard to sleep next to the courtyard wall. My face was uncovered because of the heat. I did not know there were birds perched on the wall above me till their warm droppings settled in my eyes causing cataracts. I went to see some doctors for a cure, but the more they anointed my eyes with various salves, the worse the cataracts became until I could see no more. For four years I was deprived of eyesight, and all my kinsmen were grieved at my condition. A haikira, however, took care of me for two years until he left for Elimaeus. At that time, my wife Anna worked for hire at weaving cloth, the kind of work women do. When she sent back the goods to their owners, they would pay her. Late in winter on the 7th of Dystrus, she finished the cloth and sent it back to the owners. They paid her the full salary and also gave her a young goat for the table. On entering my house, the goat began to bleed. I called to my wife and said, where did this goat come from? Perhaps it was stolen. Give it back to the owners. We have no right to eat stolen food. She said to me, it was given to me as a bonus over and above my wages. Yet I would not believe her. 
and told her to give it back to its owners. I became very angry with her over this, so she retorted, Where are your charitable deeds now? Where are your virtuous acts? See, your true character is finally showing itself. The word of the Lord. The heart of the just one is firm, trusting in the Lord. The heart of the just one is firm, trusting in the Lord. Blessed the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. His posterity shall be mighty upon the earth. The upright generation shall be blessed. The heart of the just one is firm, trusting in the Lord. In evil report he shall not fear. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. His heart is steadfast. He shall not fear till he looks down upon his foes. The heart of the just one is firm, trusting in the Lord. Lavishly he gives to the poor. His generosity shall endure forever. His horn shall be exalted in glory. The heart of the just one is firm, trusting in the Lord. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Some Pharisees and Herodians were sent to Jesus to ensnare him in his speech. They came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you are not concerned with anyone's opinion. You do not regard a person's status, but teach the way of God in accordance to the truth. Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Should we pay or should we not pay? Knowing their hypocrite, hypocrisy, he said to them, Why are you testing me? Bring me the denarius to look at. They brought one to him, and he said to them, Whose image and inscription is this? They replied to him, Caesar's. So Jesus said to them, Repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. They were utterly amazed at him. The Gospel of the Lord. It's very interesting we have this piece of the gospel story where Jesus talks about the coin and the challenge that those Pharisees were trying to trip him up with, particularly because we come off a day where we were lifting to God those who paid the ultimate price for our freedoms. And the way we talk about that is those who paid the ultimate price. We also are on a day 
that celebrates one of the very first martyrs recorded in the church who paid the ultimate price. But there's a part of this parable that kind of have, has us each look at what is the price for each of us to give to God what is God's. Justin Martyr had figured that out. He had already been not only a Christian, but a prolific writer trying to tell others about Christ. And his actions and how he was living was showing so much that it was a a threatening to some in charge. There's also a piece of this whole puzzle that is about how the early church was forming itself around unity, that is, that we were followers of the one true God. We just came off Holy Trinity Sunday. And what did that mean? Why was that so important for us to talk about it? And the early church writings and the Acts of the Apostles and many of the letters, there's an awful lot written just about our identity as children of God, that we would follow, first of all, how we knew to follow, being Jewish, being circumcised, following the rituals of the law, But as the church started to grow into pagan territory, even with greater numbers, the whole question came up, are we unified or not? What are we going to do? Many of the martyrs that happened during this time uh, were kind of caught in the middle of the church figuring out how to be one and apostolic and follow the one true God, while at the same time, following Jesus and his teachings. It was a time of turmoil, and yet a time that we know today, looking back on, coalesced the Old Testament with the New Testament. The teachings of Jesus before his resurrection and after his resurrection. A teaching where he told them to go out into the world not just to Jerusalem, but to all the world. And slowly but clearly, the faith was formed and people like Justin Martyr got the zeal to work toward that unity no matter what. It's a beautiful image for us today in a world that's chaotic, in many ways, trying to figure out its future. But I don't know if you caught it. Our gospel acclamation kind of set it off. That little trope between the hallelujahs. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. That we may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. One God calling us to serve, giving us the hope through Jesus Christ, and then answering that call with the strongest of faith and compunction. Justin Martyr, pray for us. Lord Jesus, unite us and send us as you once sent your apostles. Send us with your Holy Spirit.
keeping all who suffer before us, we pray for them. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For prophets and preachers, for those imprisoned for the gospel message of peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For political prisoners, for prisoners of conscience, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the unjustly prosecuted, for those cast out for any reason, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the suffering poor, for those who go hungry, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the maimed, for the permanent, permanently injured, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the many sick we still have with COVID, for their families that worry about them. For those who go without medical care, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who feel abandoned by God, for they, they are to feel his presence and comfort, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all for whom we have promised to pray, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the priests that are changing assignments this day, for the future of the parishes involved in the Diocese of Gaylord to always be led by Jesus alone, inspired by the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead and for those who are alone, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Annie Welton and for all of our parishioners who have lost loved ones recently, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear us in our sorrow, God of compassion. <coughs> And draw near to us. May our hope in you never waver, nor our faith desert us. For you are faithful in every generation, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, it will become the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mingling of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself when he shared in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Let us be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with these gifts we offer you in sacrifice, with humble and with contrite hearts. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, that we may celebrate worthily these mysteries, which St. Justin and St. Charles Luanga and his companions all strenuously defended with their lives through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice be acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the light of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broken and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we, we eat this bread and, and drink this cup, we, we proclaim your death, Lord, until you come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Walter Hurley, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Justin Martyr and the early martyrs, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we have the privilege to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with and his spirit. We offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
meaning and to find. I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Refreshed by heavenly food, we humbly implore you, O Lord, that attentive to the teaching of St. Justin Martyr, we may abide at all times in thanksgiving for the gifts we have received. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you and keep you safe, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Very often in our prayer there are little hints about the teachings of those saints we, we are praying with. And this last prayer is a beautiful one, that we would always and all, at all times be caught up in thanksgiving, even through our trials. That was one of St. Justin Martyr's teachings. So we are thankful today. Think of things to be thankful for. The Mass is ended. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.